All right. Good evening. Um, if you may remember, this a in part 13 of the idle speed control test and repair. Um, I did shortly before Christmas a pretty comprehensive test. And this is a sequel to the uh, calibration of the um, Jetronic CIS systems. And we were looking at it and I was basically evaluating the system at that point and I, it came back. Um, you can watch the video, you can see the details that it was running rich <clears throat> and there were issues. And um, the issues we had were twofold. And for one was we had the wrong ignition module in there and uh, that was from the 420 SEL. Then we had the wrong spark plug wires in there from a six cylinder and then the two old ones distributor cap and all of them were sort of okay and we had a leaking fuel distributor which varied so this is why the car was running to which now i wanted to do a short sequel in this and the eha valve uh, turned out had been adjusted and then the cover screw uh, got stuck in there and was basically cross-threaded so i couldn't take it out so the eha valve was uh, was junk uh, that was basically where, it, uh, where we were at at that point uh, when I decided to take everything apart. Now, in order to get back to uh, the adjustments and what I was talking about yesterday is the ECU. There's one thing you need to know about the engine control unit ECU. It is mounted on the passenger side foot compartment right wall right next to the door. It can be easily found. You just have to remove the floor mat and the right cover on there. And you can get to it and uh, you can take a look at it. These units will always reset. And when we say reset, is they have RAM, like your computer has RAM. And they read in all sorts of information from all these different sensors. And for this system to work properly, the EGR valve is... is Irrelevant it may look has to work properly too, especially on the California model, as I had pointed out. Basically, you have to check every single component from the ignition system, fuel delivery system, vacuum, and uh, if they're working correctly, and then the engine control units. So with the uh, idle control valve for instance it is not just important to check that it is electrically okay with resistance and current draw but also that you have a mechanical that the mechanical side is working properly that it is fr moving freely uh, you know that you don't have any dirt build up in there and so forth and so on the same goes for the eha valve is uh, that valve is a valve like a water valve you know faucet it open and closes electrically and so you can measure current and you can see it move but the question is is enough flow going through there so whenever you evaluate the system you have to also evaluate the physical mechanical condition of the device of course with the water temperature sensor it's it's more straightforward but if you have a large build up of, of grime or you know mineral deposits on it then you're probably not getting a correct temperature reading so that would be another thing to evaluate the same for the old oxygen sensor and the heat exhaust heat temperature sensor on the california models those things are all they all have to be checked and the potentiometer again checks out electrically but then when you move it you may see it or may not see it uh, is the is these markings you have in the resistive track that uh, where the wiper has basically pushed itself in and uh, they're basically garbage at this point no matter how if as you see even a hairline of this going across on on that conductive track that potentiometer is finished this is what i found out they won't take anything nothing at all and like i said that is an item which has to be replaced every three to five years just for good measures and then <clears throat> so whenever you re remove the battery for whatever you're doing on the car regardless um if the outage is longer than 30 seconds, maybe 10 seconds on some older models, but usually 30 seconds to a minute, uh, the ECU will lose all of these stored values. And what the uh, ECU does is it keeps reading this in 
and it creates a profile at that moment and uh, from the previous days and it gives you uh, it comes up with a medium um, calculation on where it needs to be because all the ECU really does is it controls the EHA valve and that is nothing but a choke combination with a mix mixing screw on a carburetor to either make something rich or lean you know we used to do this on the old carburetors with the choke you had a choke cable which and which and lean starting and then you know when it got hot you leaned it out and after the engine would run and um, that was done manually that's basically what the eha valve does and uh, now in order to do the tests which are in the manual under chapter 7.3 for the engine um, that's where this whole CIS stuff is explained and where the test procedures are lined out. And that's also where the uh, test procedures for with the oscilloscope came from. The, it will tell you in there to hook up to that uh, diagnostic socket, a duty cycle indicator, and you have to adjust the screw on the, uh, or that Allen screw for your mixture to 50% at idle speed when the thing is warm. Um, I have to think about it if there's something disconnected, but I don't know. And they also want you to stick into the exhaust a CO2 CO tester. And I got myself one here, an old Heath kit one. And they're looking for to go under 2% CO. And you see this was the old saying, this is from 1978, this unit. ECS engine control system, that is already ECS, that's what they called it. They didn't say catalytic converters. And you wanna be at 85, which is about 1%. That's about the manual says under two, preferably 1%. That is where you're trying to get to with that 50% setting. You may reach it, you may not reach it. Depends on how old the engine is, how many miles you got on there what compression you got left and so far and so on and how good the catalytic converter still is. But you can at least get a, a feedback reading of it. I will do this now in order to be able to adjust this with the uh, duty cycle tester on the test socket. You actually have to uh, wait the 40 cycles uh, of starting, 40 starts, uh, before this will work properly because otherwise you will be reading all sorts of values. It's gonna go from 20% all the way up to 80% and it can be all over the place because the computer has not gotten its median value for the operation at idle until the 40 starts have been uh, you know, accomplished and it has saved enough data to come out with medium, median, uh, values for all of this stuff yeah that was the point i wanted to make so this setup this whole test with the uh, engine control in terms of 50 percent duty cycle to lean out the mixture to do the correct adjustment is not really going to work until the computer has settled down and then you can do it so you have to wait maybe three or four weeks and drive to 300 miles before you can actually do the final adjustment for the 50% duty cycle on it. And um, you wanna to refer to the manual 7.3, I forgot what chapter that is, 152, 153, something like this. And it will tell you also on how to uh, set the computer up with the push button in the back there on that other diagnostic socket. For this to get the uh, unit into the readout for the 50%, duty cycle especially on the california model you know when it is warm and uh, that will conclude it i think that was the most important thing in here which i need oh yeah the other thing is what i wanted to add yesterday was when you have a car where the uh, fuel distributor was dry for whatever reason either because you're putting in a new one or the car sat for a long time what you want to do is you want to jump out the fuel pump relay uh, 7 and 8 30 to 87 and let the fuel pump run and then push the plate all the way down while you have all eight uh, nuts open for the different for the eight fuel lines so it can bleed out all the air on top of this and you want to use a rag 
you know, you want to cover that with a wax so you don't have the fuel spraying all over. That's the first thing I would do this way. You're going to get a, a, all the air out of the system and what is trapped inside the uh, fuel distributor. That is the first thing. And then you release the plate and then you go ahead and set your uh, plate for the correct, uh, you know, play on there with the two to one to three millimeters like I explained yesterday. But you want to bleed the whole system. That is really important. Okay. And um, let's see if we're going to get a good one or two good uh, cold start videos. We will see if my battery is going to hold up. She's a little bit on the weak side. And uh, we will find out if I have any water in my fuel system. I doubt it because I have flushed it out now twice with fresh gasoline. Complete tank fill. So we should be okay there. But we will see. All right. You have a good evening.